Pig Farmers Care. Learn more at iowapork.org. All you have to do is you just have to get their feet here on the pavement and bing. Being in Des Moines, you just get it through the experience. I'm a fan of a lot of our like fast, casual cuisine. A little theater, some great restaurants. There's a lot going on musically. If you can't find things to do in Des Moines, you must be boring. This is a magical place. All you have to do is just have to get Welcome to Fairway, where we're not a mega food, fashion, fitness, you name it center. For 80 years, we've been your neighborhood meat and grocery store focused on cutting you the highest quality meats for your backyard barbecue, providing the freshest ingredients for your summer salad, and making sure your shopping trip is as easy and sweet as grandma's blueberry pie. So while others try to put it all under one roof, at Fairway, we put our all into meat and grocery. Welcome to Fairway. Save Univista University is in the middle of a bunch of fields. Hey guys, wait up. Game on. They say our idea of fun is morning tea. And afternoon tea. And anytime tea. And we hang out like bumps on a log. They say Storm Lake, Iowa isn't in the center of the action. And when we study, we're not exactly grounded. But you know what we say. You gotta see it to believe it. They say Buena Vista University is in the middle. This summer, the top athletes in the country return to America's heartland. Be there June 21st through the 24th, live at Drake Stadium in Des Moines, as the superstars of today and tomorrow put it all on the line. And Simpson to win it. At the USATF Outdoor Championships. Hastings holds on to win. To catch all of the action live, purchase tickets now at draketicks.com slash USATF. The USATF Outdoor Championships are back in Iowa. Don't miss it. Building a strong community doesn't happen overnight. It takes a vision for the future, the ability to turn a challenge into a success, and individuals who inspire new generations of growth. Greater Des Moines has done a lot of growing over the years, and so have we. At Brick Gentry Law, your success is something that we create together. Thank you for making us a part of your community. Thank you for 50 years. Building a strong Here's community. to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. Hi, Ron here, head coach of Westside Auto Pros. When your car's on the injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. I know that. That's why you need to bring it here to Westside Auto Pros. I have a team of experts that can fix almost every automotive injury. Whether it's a fractured joint, a brake, or if your car just got its bell rung, no problem. We can even do a complete physical on your car to make sure it's game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to Westside Auto Pros and we'll get it back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you guys are dogging it back here. Let's move it, move it, move it. Miss your hometown clothing store, the one that had it all, everything to get the work done all in one place. GNL Clothing is your hometown Iowa store. Stop in and see us, or we're only a click or phone call away. Family owned for nearly a century. GNL Clothing, 1801 Ingersoll, Des Moines. This is Iowa, and here, we don't just dream, we make history by nearly doubling our clean energy as part of our 100% renewable vision. With this, our energy costs will remain some of the lowest in the nation. We'll create new jobs and boost economic growth. Our air will be cleaner, our state stronger, and together, we'll advance this country's energy future forever. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. This is Iowa.
Testing. Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Test, 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 test. You've got me in. Perfect. Hello, hello everyone. I'm Justin Forster. Alongside me is Joe Danielson. Ready to bring you this Class 1A Girls State Final soccer match between Iowa City Regina and Bishop Heelan. Welcome to CISN TV, the number one social streaming platform dedicated exclusively to local Iowa sports. CISN.TV. Joe. Uh, looking at yesterday's results, Iowa City Regina beat Nevada 2-1 in overtime. A minute and 30 seconds into overtime, uh, Iowa City Re uh, Regina are 10 and 7 at this point, and Nevada were 15 and 4 as the favourites. Um, give us your thoughts on that from uh, yesterday's match leading into this final here. Yeah, it's a pretty exciting uh, match to see uh, the favourite go down, kind of get upset in the early rounds. That's what it's kind of what all the state tournament is about, and uh, it's an exciting way to, to get us going here. Um, and then it kind of shows also here, once you get to this stage, anything can happen. Yeah, and, uh, you know, just looking at this, Nevada, have, uh, obviously, have been at the state championships in consecutive years. You know, Iowa City Regina return <coughs> to the state soccer tournament for the seventh straight season <coughs> under, under Coach Anne LaRue, which is... A uh, phenomenal achievement, actually. I mean, um, they've they've been here every year. I remember them here last year. Uh, they've they've got their senior forward Lauren Garde. She was 15 goals until yesterday. She scored two uh, in a in that 2-1 win. So that's fantastic. She's on 17 goals this season. I mean, that's absolutely fantastic, Joe. Yep, and that's uh, senior leadership there too. That's kind of you know leading your team. Uh, it both kind of in, in spirit and then on the field kind of you can tell them look this is what's going to happen and go score a goal and then show them also and that gets everybody going and it's a pretty experienced team here looking at seven eight seniors and then the rest of the, they also start four sophomores so uh yeah everybody's kind of been here before and they know what to expect at this point yeah and uh, i see they're returning eight seniors uh well sorry eight returners from last year which is uh also brilliant so they're bringing in this leadership and this experience into the squad moving forward into uh into into the actual final which is uh which is brilliant so th there's a there's an unbelievable leadership there yep and that also is a, it's a kind of good two good years of players to have you have senior le leadership and then you have sophomores that are good enough to play up at this level so They'll be able to play three years really on your varsity team and as also gain that experience to kind of continue the, the cycle here in, uh, for Iowa City Regina. Yeah, just uh, before the game, I had a chat with Anne LaRue, the uh, head coach for Iowa City Regina. Um, she tells me that they're going to play out, go out in a 4 2 3 1, which, uh, you know, is a, a standard lineup nowadays. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens, you know. Looking at B Bishop Heelan. I see again they uh, upset the higher seed, so they beat uh, beat Gilbert, fift who are 15 and two, three zero. So again, uh, an absolutely uh, uh, big upset um, within the tournament, and then moving into the final, they also have a freshman. Actually, she scored. Well, she was on 14 goals, one yesterday, so she's on 15 with five five assists right now. Um, Ellie. Uh, Gengler, so I mean it's uh, again it's a uh, <laughs> it's brilliant, and she's got all these years ahead of her. Yeah, that says something about their their uh, program also too, is that they could bring in a, a really a girl out of out of middle school, and she can have she can really lead the team in goals, and and that's you know that's a pretty high amount, 14 coming into this state tournament here, especially for a freshman. Uh, they as well, you know, and for her to do that on a team that's already really established that has been to this tournament. For 10 straight seasons or yeah. 17th trip after making 10 straight tournaments. This is their 17th stop here. So uh, for her to come in and do that is really incredible. Yeah, it's an um, unbelievable achievement. Uh, I was talking to the head coach, uh, Cl Coach uh, Cholstein, and uh, he seems uh, pretty confident about today. And, uh, you know, he's, he's obviously coming off a 3-0 win yesterday is, is boosting in confidence at this point. Uh, 
I spoke to him about his system. Uh, not unorthodox. It's a 5-3-2. Looking to play his, uh, his uh, outside backs, his twos and threes, as uh, wing backs, basically. So it'll change to a 3-5-2 as the game moves on. So I'll be very interested to see how things materialize. Yep, and uh, that, that can be a little bit of a different look, too, for other teams. And for him, it's his first year also here, so he's right there along with uh, – uh, Gangler, Ellie Gangler, they're both in their first year, and then they're seeing great success so far. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a glorious day here in uh, Des Moines, by the way. If you're sitting at home watching us, why don't you get out here um, if you're close by and uh, come and watch the soccer or football, whatever we want to call it today. It's an absolutely beautiful atmosphere here. The, the pitch is in immaculate condition. I went out there earlier. It's a uh, in fantastic condition and uh, I think we're in for an exciting match today Joe. Yep right over here at the uh, county soccer complex uh, the fields are always looking nice and they really always have been there's I've never been here and seen them and that they weren't in real great playing shape. Yeah I mean it's uh, looking forward to it um, the rosters having gone over them they look very very strong um, I've seen some of these players in action before so we're, we're, I think we're in for a, a fantastic matchup today. The lineups are going to come out. It looks like they're bringing the whole team out. Um, so, yeah, we're just going to wait for the introductions. So this is something different, Joe. I mean, in the past, it's normally they'll bring out the starting 11. And I see for high school, it's a little, like, a little bit different where they bring out the full squad. So it, it's great because then every single kid gets the opportunity you know to walk out in front of their parents and their school fans and so i think that's going to be awesome yep it's uh it's another one of those cool things the girls union has done here kind of changing it up and keeping it really interesting for all of their tournaments really that we've been a part of too they're uh, really innovative and they've really added a lot of nice features like this yep and uh shortly the starting lineups will be brought to you by Buena Vista University.
Mitchell Schmidt. Number 30, Marin Huss. And number 36, Abigail Berger. And now the starters for the Regals. Wearing number double zero, Megan Wick. Number seven, Claire Conlon. Number 12, Anna Zinio. Number 13, Nora Abusada. Number 14, Lauren Gardy. Number 16, Natalie Supel. Number 20, Natalie Shank. Number 21, Grayson Dumont. Number 22, Kennedy Scott. Number 23, Claire Gardy. And number 38, Claire Sullivan. The Eagles are led by head coach Ann LaRue, who is assisted by Scott Miller, Kate Murray, Abby Bean, Nick LaRue, Grace LaRue, Well, there you have it as the players go through and uh, before they go out to battle with each other, shake hands or pump fists. Joe, your thoughts on how this game might turn out, I mean, between these two sides um, that have got a lot of experience at the state soccer championships. Yep, and uh, yeah, kind of like you said, both teams have definitely been here and they know what to expect. But again, it always is about uh, really getting your... Getting that, which team establishes themselves first? We know which team starts kind of getting into the rhythm, the emotion, starts getting some chemistry going, and then that's usually how they, you know, move ahead with play and score goals, play good defense, and uh, get victories ultimately in the end. And uh, we we both talked about both star players, and it's going to be kind of uh, important for both teams to get their uh, their key goal scorers going with guard for the Regals and uh, uh, Gengler for the uh, Crusaders here. So, yeah, kind of whichever one of them gets the ball going, gets in, uh, involved with the offense, uh, we should see here. Yeah, and it'll be very interesting to see how they shape up uh, with their system. Um, but also, I mean, you got to think about it, yeah, we've got goal scorers here. But defense wins you games. You don't concede goals, you maybe score a goal. And that's what's going to win you the game at the end of the day. Well, it looks like they're about to kick off. Um, it's uh, Bishop Healing Crusaders kicking off from uh, our end in the grandstand here, from uh, left to right. It's, uh, Ellie uh, Gensler on the ball to kick off, the freshman top goal scorer at this point. Let's see if she can bag a few more goals today as we're set to go in the kickoff. Ball's played back, deep into the center back. He just clears the ball away, but it's picked up in the midfield. Yeah, a little bit of a fast start here, you know. Uh, some good uh, challenges for both sides. Yeah, as uh, Iowa City Regina look to uh, attack down the far right-hand side, but it's picked up. Uh, Harlem Bishop, who just kick it out of bounds. And uh, throw in. Look to kind of see them settle in here on this throw in as they kind of get into shape here. And uh, Zeno throws it in, but it just, uh, teammate, kicks it out of bounds. Oh, that would be the opposite of uh, what they in. were looking to do. <laughs> yep, well, it started off at a decent pace as the ball's played up front. Taken nicely, great turn. Near his side, Regina steal the ball as they go to goal. She's breaking into the box, looking to take on players here. Lovely ball played inside, a little bit behind the support player coming in. Nice thought, a good attack yeah. there from uh, the Lauren Gard, yeah. I believe, going in. Lauren Gard was a little bit late with her run. Ball was played in behind as Regina looked to 
capitalize on this. They look to build up again. Ball played inside. It's just a light touch by Bishop Harlem. Ball given away. As Bishop Harlem look to capitalize on the far side of the field. Thrown to Regina. Ball played in to Claire Garde. Sophomore midfielder. Ball given away. It's Bishop Healam down the left hand side. Looking to break. Yeah, Keeping Regina, possession. Regina, nice defense there. Yeah. You know, there's that, that set we talked about that they're playing, or that the five defenders back. No trouble there. Throw in far side of the field to Bishop Healam. Crusaders. Ball gets thrown in. They're looking for on the far side. No one else in the box, so there's no support play. But they do get a corner out of this. First corner of the day to Bishop Healam. Yep, I think that was the, uh, who do we have there? Number 20, Ashley Asaf. Good effort there yep. to keep with it that looks ball. Looks like they've put the, send the center backs up as the corner comes in. Didn't beat the first defenders, clearing their lines. But it's well taken. Play was broken up. Thrown to Regina. Thrown in. They're looking for Grayson Dumont. Lays the ball off. <laughs> ball played forward. Broken up. Ball's just bouncing around over there. It's between the two teams. As Regina looked to break the line. Taken. Well done. As they break the lines again, Regina coming in. It's Lauren Garde with the ball just over the bar. Lauren Garde has got a little bit of pace about her. When she gets the ball, she breaks the lines. And, uh, I mean, she looks quite dangerous. Yep, nice on-ball speed when she gets that, receives a pass or gets a steal. She really uh, speeds up and makes a move towards the net. A goal kick to Helen. Straight into Garde. Not the player you want to kick it to at this point. Garde out to the left hand side. Looking for Abusado, who is fouled yep, she on the nearest side. In a dangerous position, Joe. Dangerous yep. position here. Took a took kind of a hard shot from Allison Stanek, the freshman for the uh, Crusaders, and she'll uh Bring up a shot for Grayson Dumont to take this set piece here. Dumont will look to play this in with her right foot as she lines it up. She's coming straight onto the ball. Different technique. Delivers. It goes over. And it just goes over the crossbar. Oh, yeah. What a good chance. Why not? Yep. Test the goalkeeper at this Might point well of the game. Put something on it and uh, just, you know, a few inches shorter and she would have had that on goal. Crusaders goal kick. They just can't get out of their half at this point, Joe. Drops in. Yep, that's... Claire Garde. And it looks like it's a foul. Is it in the box? Just outside the box. In a dangerous position. Yep, a little bit of a late flag. And she did she did contact the ground also, though. But there was definitely a foul there. And it looks like DeMond's going to step up. She's got a dangerous right foot at this point. After we saw the last free kick, Joe. This could be dangerous. Referee steps up. He's getting into position there. Yep. Demond steps up. Delivers. Just over the bar. You know, sometimes when the free kick's right on the 18 yard box, you need a little bit of a dip to get it into. Just dip it over the wall, bend it round. If it's a little bit further out, maybe 30 yards, as we have a substitution for the Crusaders. Uh, number 21, I think, has come into the game. Yeah, Ellie Barber. They're looking to change it up in the midfield. They still can't get out of their half. They look to break. Regina have done well. Ball played forward. Possession given away. Takes a swing. Misses the ball. Now we play. Oops. Dumont going into the tackle. Yep, no Dumont looks like she's one of the key players. She always wants the ball. Looking to get on the ball again. 
building it up from the midfield. They look to play through her. Ball played inside. Looking for Claire Conlon. Broke, play, bro play broken up. Again, the cr offside called. The re referee hasn't looked across at the linesman. As play still goes on, linesman still got a flag up. Nobody has seen the linesman with a flag up. Ball gets played forward. The game's still on. I was thinking she might have uh, yeah. just declined the call or maybe just not saw it at all. Or so, Joe at, the end of, at the, Joe, at the end of the day, when something like that happens and it maybe it looks like it might be off, the you know, referee should have a look at a linesman quickly. Okay, is yep. it on? Play on. If, it, if it's off, then it's offside. A regroup and uh, regroup. check out your officials and uh, get back to it. Yep, absolutely. Bishop Helam. They've got the midfield secure at this point. Look to play forward. They're going to break the line. It's cleared away by Ashley Asop. Ball played forward. Into the keeper. we got Wicks on the ball. I think it's the first time she's touched it. Yep, I believe so. And uh, Yep. Ball cleared. Looking for the pace of Garde. Looking to break. She has got some pace about her. Abasada looks to win the ball, but it's taken away. Helen, the substitute. But she's been stripped of possession. The crowd getting a bit rowdy here. Yep, nice play there from uh, number 13, Ever Aesop for the Crusaders. Yep, another free kick. And she's just trying to fight off that uh, strong offense from the Regal so far we've seen here. Delivered forward aggressive. looking for Garde. Cleared away. Back into DeMont. Takes a touch. Looking to break the line. On the dribble. Can't get past three players. But it's picked up in the midfield. Out wide. DeMont plays it back. Looks to deliver. Shot from distance. Not strong enough, Joe. Yep, not, just wasn't quite committed to taking the shot there. Didn't get enough foot on it. Fitzsimmons, ball in her hand. Looks like she might have a busy day today. As uh, Garde looks to break, delivers a long shot again. So really, the right now at this point, the game has been played in one half. Bishop Heal and Crusaders are really struggling to break the lines. They're struggling to get out of their half as Regina look to make some changes. Three subs. They're taking Garde out. Number six, number 10, and number 36 on the field for the Regals. That's uh, Welter. Gasparoni, number 10. Welter, number yep. six. And Abigail Berger as well, number 36. And the, DeMont, diff yep, the difference wide. here, the defense is the Regals can control the ball on their side of the field, whereas uh, Crusaders are having trouble with that attack. Yeah, they are. They just can't. I mean, they've got one up front. They don't have much support in behind. And the two center backs for uh, Regina are really playing well at this point. They're winning everything in the air. So it's going to be really difficult just with one forward, no support coming in for the Crusaders. They need somebody a little bit higher in the space here, in the hole. As, as they look to break the line. A long ball forward. It looks like it's going to be taken care of by Natalie Shank, which she does. Plays it forward. Out wide on the right. It just seems like everything's out on the right, but DeMont on the ball, looking to break the line. It's cut out. Helam looking to materialize something, anything. Looking to build the attack. Out here, the near side to us, on the right-hand side. Ball goes out. It's a throw-in. It was a nice idea there from uh, number eight, Brooke, or no, Ashlyn Peck. Just a little too strong. Abigail Berger, the sub, receives the ball. Played back. Cleared the lines. It's up front. Walter, plays, replaced guard A. Looks to press. It's ball cleared away. Helam, looking for something now. As... Uh, Ashlyn Peck breaks a line. She's broken one. 
on the dribble. I thought I thought maybe she'll try and take on the centre back. Ops to pass, balls cleared away. Throw in to the Crusaders. Near side. Throw in taken. Pressure coming in from the substitute. Berger looks to play the ball in. It's Walter. Walter looking. Is Berger on maybe? No, nope. cleared away. It's a nice pass in from Berger. Yeah. Nice look there from the middle. And another nice defensive play there again to yeah. not give up on the ball. A nice little give and go combination to break the line. She ball played again. in. Berger. Berger's had an impact in this game so far. As Crusaders look to clear. Lovely control by the, by the substitute there for Helam Crusaders. Oh, Ellie yeah. Barber. Another sub for each team here. Looks like they do multiple subs on a on a rotation on a quick basis, and it's 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 possibly the weather. Yeah, I think so too. It's a nice clear day, no clouds. It's pretty hot. Could uh, want to avoid cramps yep. or anything like that. I mean, it just it just looks like that. Uh, oh, as uh, Crusaders look to break the line. And now. Ashley Asopa on the ball. And it's taken away. DeMont. She goes, I want this ball. Given away. Asopa. Asopa on the ball. Cuts inside. Into pressure. Ball gets played through. It's taken away. And here we have a nice piece of skill there. From Bella, Bella Gasparoni. It's a good Italian name that, isn't it? Yep, nice football name. Well, Italy didn't make the World Cup, so <laughs> Gasparoni's going to do it here for Regina. Ball cleared away by Amber Sopi. So you got Amber Sopi and Ashley Sopi. I take it they're sisters. I would guess that is correct here. Uh, that might be the only. Oh, we have another Hutchinson sisters as well yep. uh, for the Crusaders. As Helim, Crusaders look to build. DeMont on the ball. She cleans up everything. She plays that holding midfield in the, in the sixth roll very well. Look to spread the ball wide. Here we have Kennedy Scott on the ball. Goes inside. Plays the ball up front. Into Walter's feet. Looking for a shot. Gasparoni. Limping a little bit. She kind of just she turned. Looks like she's going to walk it off. Yeah. Yeah. Turned and fired from out there again. Uh, Ball played forward. Regal's maybe looking to get a little closer. Yeah, we have uh, Asopi. Ellie Asopi just possessed as Regina looked to build. Kennedy Lovely little Scott. dink. Cleared away by him. Yep. Scott with a nice defense. The sophomore down there. Yeah, she just came through with her right foot and cleared the lines. <laughs> Got a coming back in the game. Looks like they're just trying to rotate these players, get give them a little water break, get them back in. It's hot. It could be a long day. We've had 20 minutes. Still 0-0 zero, zero here at County Soccer Complex. Oh, and a collision As again. they look to break again. Regino, oh, what a beautiful piece of play there. Uh, just a little bit of a big touch, and the ball's cleared away. DeMont on the ball. Little one-two, played out wide. It's taken away by the Crusaders on the far left-hand side of the field. Shielding it. Good piece of possession. Keeping the ball in the corner. Giving it away. DeMont. Launches the ball forward. It goes out for a goal kick. If you've just joined us today, you're watching the 2018 Farm Bureau Girls Soccer State Championships 1A semi-final between Bishop Heelan, Crusaders, and Iowa City uh, Regals. The Crusaders are in the dark, dark blue, navy blue, and the Regals are in white shirts and blue shorts as the ball is in the midfield lovely challenge what a great header forward Garde on the ball their top goal scorer plays the ball forward cleared away all the pressure has been 
being on one half so far, Joe, and it's, uh, I just get the feeling there's going to be a goal as the ball's played wide. They're yep. shooting from distance, but they just can't seem to break the line on the top of the 18-yard box. 18 yard box. Everything is from distance. They're looking to break the line there, but, you know, it's going wide. It's going over the bars. Yep. Regina look to make another substitution. And Number see, four uh, coming the in the game. Crusaders kind of eight players uh, just getting closer and closer yep. to their own goal, sucked back into their own defense. Right, it's right. Hard to clear the ball when all your players are on one end of the field. Yep. Like I spoke about, you know, they really the the other forward has been dropped deep into the hole here, so they just really can't break this line with support play. The two forwards need to play closer together. So as the ball shifts, they shift together as Regina looked to come down the left-hand side. But it's stripped, taken away, cleared the Crusaders, clearing the line. Good, good piece of pressure there. Good piece of pressure there by Alison Stanek. Kind of just uh, decides Stanek. to launch it there. and uh, Got a lovely control. flick, well taken. Goes round the defender, looks to play forward. Cleared away. Dumont on the ball, first touch forward. Looks to get a shot off. She had an option out wide there, Joe. I mean, she could have slipped it in. Yeah, two hey. defenders on there. She, tough to see, right in motion. I thought she would have played it wide. As the Crusaders are really trying to find something, they just can't keep the ball at this point. The Regals have had everything. However, the Crusaders have been defending really well as a unit, as one. They're keeping it really tight at the back. I mean, they got their three central midfielders. As Garde is on the ball. Lovely turn inside. Every time Garde gets the ball, there's three players on her. Dumont looking to break. Is she going to go wide? No foul. No. Yep, referee is uh, letting him play here so far too. A couple, couple collisions, incidental yep, contact, yeah. but there's no diving at the Iowa State Soccer Championships That's today. Right. <laughs> None of that here. Nice little battle out here to the near side of us. Abigail Berger up against what a great matchup, Allison Stanek. They just can't seem to keep the ball, can they? Ball given away. Dangerous ball into the midfield. Square ball. Got cut out. One back. Great piece there by Claire Conlon. She gave the ball away. Got back in there, Joe, to win the ball back. Yep, and we've seen that. You know, both teams aren't giving up here at all, uh, which has kind of led uh, the Crusaders to stay in this game as they've, they've, they haven't gotten down on themselves from taking yeah. this attack. Lovely ball played in for Dumont. Demont looking for Garde. Not quite there. Cleared away. Demont again. Everything going through Demont. Played into the just into the final third, but it's taken away by the Crusaders, who launched the ball forward. It goes over the centre back's head. A little bit of pace in here. Keeper comes out. Wick. Miss cleared to the far side. A little bit of pressure here from the Crusaders on the far left hand side. Crusaders, by the way, have only had have had the one corner of the match. Looks like they might get the second. No, it's a throw-in. Good piece of pressure there. That's yep. the only danger here, Joe. I think they're going to look to get the ball in behind. Yep, a long As clear. they take the corner. But one. again, yeah, they yeah. don't have the numbers down here. Yep. There's, There's only one player in the box. For uh, the Regals. DeMont on the ball. Looks wide out here for Berger. Berger's chasing. The cover comes across from the center back. Pulled out of position, but she's done very well there to come across. Abby Steen. Well, it looks like they're uh, going to have a mandatory water break. And as they say that, Joe, I think we should have one as well. Yep, I think yeah, so. I think that's a good idea. I think yeah, I think so. I mean, it is hot today. And up here, up here in the commentary booth, in our nice little tent, I think we need a water. Would you like a water, Joe? That sounds good, yeah. <laughs> Looks like in the other semi-final, Assumption are winning 1-0. So 
if it stays that way, they will go through to the 1A state final. However, still very early in the game. We've got 19 minutes left, or 19 minutes and 20 seconds to be specific. So, so far it's, uh, it's been uh, very, very interesting because it looks like uh, the Crusaders are looking to break on the counter-attack. Okay, and there's always a counter press from uh, Regina. They're pressing very hard. They give the ball away. They press very hard in the in the final third here. They look to keep the ball in the midfield. I mean, what are your your thoughts right now? I just I just think it's there's going to be a goal at some stage. Yep, I think you're uh, you're right there when you say that. Yeah, it's kind of like two levels to the defense too. They're playing offense while pressing pretty hard up here. Offense with their. Uh, Defense with their offense in a way, sort of as they're constantly attacking, making that defense tired while their their back line defenders kind of just have to s sit back, wait. They're, uh, they've got numbers all the time. They know that because of the formation they play. Uh, and, yeah, you know, they, they want to look to keep the ball on that front line. And for uh, the Crusaders, you know, they're going to need to look to uh, move something into the midfield first. And, you know, they're going to go for those long balls forward, but – they're, they're going to find themselves outnumbered out there when they do that, so maybe look to play the midfielders first so then they can get a, get a ball in, feed to, uh, <laughs> feed to those forwards, and maybe get another corner kick. You know, that gives them time to run everybody in. But, yeah, they're really struggling to uh, move their offensive players down for, to challenge the Regina defense. Yeah, Regina, they, they look to play through guard A, and uh, she's got a little burst of pace about her. She's had one or two chances. Um but credit to the Crusaders right now. I mean, they've, for the first 25 minutes, have withstood some pressure. They've cleared their lines. They've played a couple over the top. Like I said earlier, they're looking to break the lines with the long counter-attack. And, uh, you know, they have a bit of pace up front with Natalie Shank. Um, and if they could probably get one in behind, I mean, it could cause a problem. Well, the players are still on a water break. We are on a water break. They come out. They're walking out. Not running out. It's hot out there. Oh, we had storms come through Des Moines earlier on in the week. It was uh, outrageous. I mean, we had hail and you name it. Still waiting for Iowa City Regina Regals to come out. Who, by the way, if you've just joined us, beat Nevada yesterday. Who, who were 15-4 and four in favorites. Iowa City Regina beat them 2-1 in overtime. And both goals were scored by Lauren Garde. Who's causing some havoc today as well. Bishop Healing Crusaders beat Gilbert yesterday with 15 and 2, higher ranked team. Beat them 3 0. The freshman forward. The freshman forward. As the fans are trying to determine who's throwing it is. But the freshman forward, Ellie Gangler, who's got some years ahead of her. Wearing jersey number 17, has scored 15 goals, got one yesterday. Little bit of pressure here, the near side to us. Back into the game, we have Nora Abusada. Abusada. Ball thrown in. Dumont plays the ball forward, looking for Garde. Holds the ball on the midfield, delivers. Trying to find the player on the far right hand side. Just switching the point of attack. But it's broken down by the Crusaders. Looking to break the line. Loads of space in here. She could have carried it another four or five yards at least to commit the defender. That's something we've kind of seen from both teams so far. Is, uh, you know, overly excited to uh, get get the ball out of there. Not enough dribbling when they could, they've got space to dribble into and have moved to wait for something to happen. Yep. Again. Taken away by Claire Conlon into Dumont. Dumont needs some support. No support. Gives the ball away. Dangerous to their top goal scorer. 
as the Crusaders look to come. Good defending. Cleared away. We have a little bit of a mo momentum swing here. Regina looking to clear their lines. Picked up by Dale Bleeker. Plays it out wide to the left. 2v1 out there on the right hand side. DeMont on the ball. Spreads the ball out wide. Far side. We're on the near side. Looking to break down the right hand side. It's a good run. Nice little battle out there. One by the Crusaders. DeMont on the ball. Straight to DeMont. Looks to deliver with a right foot. DeMont again. Delivers. Looking for guard A. Little header. That's an easy one for the goalkeeper Fitzsimmons. Yep. Who I said earlier might have a busy day today. Yep. So far, most of her work has been pretty easy because, uh, you know, the Regal's attack has died down right in that, right in that, right about the uh, five yards before the uh, goal box. But, yeah, look for her to keep it going. As DeMont was trying to put some pressure on there, ball was cleared. It was picked up by Claire Gaudet. But a little bit of pressure here in the midfield on the Crusaders. Crusaders just can't seem to clear their lines right now. Yep, here they come, the Crusaders. You hear the fans kind of <laughs> echoing what we said there. Far Keep side, dribbling it with it, you know. A little bit of pace. Good defending there by Anna Zanil. Just got her body in, in front of her and just managed to shield it out. But it's a throw into the Crusaders. In those situations, you look to try and shield the ball to keep possession. So we had another substitution. There's a rotation of substitutions coming in and out here. It's hot down there. As the top goal scorer is on the ball. Delivers a ball. That's an easy one for Wick. She just pulls that one out of the sky. Looks to deliver. It's a long punt to the halfway line. Looking for Garde. Little challenge. Two players challenged her. Ball goes forward, is cleared out. Throw in. Abasada delivers. Kennedy Scott looks to play the ball into the midfield. Looking for Claire Conlon. Yeah, it's played to the wrong foot. A little souvenir into the stands over here. Abasada is going out. And Emma Walter is coming back into the game. If you've just joined us, it's 0 0 here. The 1A state semi-final between Bishop Heelan Crusaders and Iowa City Regina Regals. At this point of the game, Reg Regina Regals have had most of the possession. But there has been a bit of a momentum swing. As the Crusaders look to build. Ball played out wide. It's won by Emma Walter. So looking to keep the ball. Yep. A nice recovery there from... Uh, Throw in. Allison to Stanek. the Crusaders. Stanek throws the ball forward. DeMont picks it up in the midfield. Plays a little 1 2 with Grace Mahoney. Up. Yep, in the long ball. Sorry, here Claire, from Claire the Conlon. There's too much on that one yeah. again. Right idea, but. Ball looking, looking to break the line forward. Yep, and uh, kind of when, when the ball gets to that far side of the field yeah. over there, you can kind of hear both teams really yelling and cheering each other on, and that's, you hear a lot of that over here. We're oh. uh, nice the Crusaders look to the break fans. forward. Yeah, it's cleared out. It's picked up by Claire Garde. Looking out wide. Nice little battle out there. If you've just joined us, please don't leave us. You're watching Iowa City Regina versus Bishop Heelan. Match number two, the 2A final, semi-final. Waverly Shell, Shell Rock versus Pella. So we're in for some outstanding games here. And our match number three, the 3A semi-final. Ankeny Hawks versus West Des Moines Valley. We've got some thrilling games today. Yep, and uh, I'm excited to get, get into them and get here. The two more games after this one. This one's been pretty good so far. Got a Looks to play the ball in. It's cleared away. Out for a throw in.
another substitution for the Crusaders. Like I said, they're rotating players in. So thrown on the far side. Delivery into the box. Couldn't beat the first line of defense. Cleared out for a corner though. Missed kick. Looks like there might be a short corner here. If it's done quickly, Gaudet has gone out. Are they going to play? Yes. The one, two. There should be two defenders out there. Because it's a 2v1 situation on a short corner. Just can't clear the lines. Goes out for a throw in. Yep, and they'll get another chance here with the Regals. And Azenio goes to collect the ball. She's going to throw it in. Finds Dumont. Dumont takes a touch to the left. Gets away from a defender, but not the second defender. Claire Gaudet. Play the ball back. Claire Gaudet on the ball. Straight into the goalkeeper, Fitzsimmons. Nice, easy one, smothered. Yep, and Fitzsimmons hasn't had a lot of problems here with those. Again, it just yep. kind of, the offense kind of sputters out once they get close to the goal. Gaudet on the ball. Ball played forward. Again, looking for Lauren Garde. Crusaders looking to break now. They've got a bit of space here to work with. Ball played inside. To Katie Cook. Looking to break down the left-hand side. Nice piece of skill there. Ball rolls out for a throw. We have 11 minutes and 25 seconds left of the first half. If you've just joined us, it's 0-0 between the Crusaders and Iowa City, Regina Regals. It's been a cracking match so far. Yep, you Stay gotta, tuned. You expect here in this last 10 minutes of the first half, a strong attack from the Regals here. Good piece of pressure there on Garde. Manages to get it out. To DeMont. DeMont's been a workhorse there in the midfield, playing in that six role as she tries to break the line. Cleared away. Again, the long ball forward. Well taken out wide there. By Ashley Asopi. Ball played inside. Looking to break down. Near side. Right back. Getting involved in the attack. Looks to deliver. Comes off. Kennedy Scott. Throw in. Throw in for Emma Hutchinson. Flicked on. Wicks comes out. Nice easy one for her to take care of. Wicks tells her defenders, let's get up. The whole team. Delivers out wide. Goes short. And Azenio on the ball. Carries it forward. She gets the halfway line. Got A. Oh, he's got two players around her. Looks to play the ball wide. Yep, she was definitely in the scouting report today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You could definitely see that. Every time she gets it, two players. She's got to find a way to break loose. Maybe break off the shoulder of uh, one of the center backs. Uh, good piece of skill there. Delivered. And it's Fitzsimmons. Yep, another nice, e yep. nice easy one to smother there. Ball played in by Gasparoni. Good piece of skill there on the far side, on the right. Again, they looked, uh, Crusaders looked to break down the left hand side. Lovely ball played in. Cut back onto the right foot. Crusaders trying to find a way through. There's a little frustration out there. Players having a go at each other. <coughs> Crusaders look to build. Dangerous ball played inside. Two guard A. You don't want it going there, but it's cleared away. With eight minutes to go, I mean, I think uh, if you're the coach right now, Joe, you might want to take this in at 0 0 and just, if I. <laughs> If I'm, with, if I'm with the Crusaders, I'm probably going to say, hey, let's take this in 0-0, regroup, and 
look to build on the second half whereas, whereas I think Regina were like let's try and get this goal I mean we've had all the pressure let's try and score yeah Regina is almost kind of struggling at this point on offense yeah. just to get it in and score where where the Crusaders are kind of they're they're happy to be here sort of with this tie right now yeah. Gasparoni plays the ball out wide to Dumont Dumont with a shot goes wide from distance it's going to take a lot to beat uh <coughs> Fitzsimmons from that range, I would say at this point. Yep, really any goalie at this point uh, in the tournament, it's going to be pretty tough. Yeah, and that's why they're there. I mean, defense wins games. Goal kick. Into the midfield. Well taken. Good piece of control. Walter. Conlon. Breaks, breaks past two defenders. Godet, Godet's looking to break, but she's got three players around her. She's free now. Looking at some movement. Turns, shoots. Good block. Dumont on the ball. Shot. Just goes wide. The fans are getting anxious to my left here. Yep, you can tell. City Regina fans to my left here getting really anxious they waiting for that first goal you can tell they might have scored some of those long ones uh, this year with how they're taking them and the fans are kind of uh, you know expecting them to be closer and on on target goal kick forward picked up in the midfield Dumont putting a bit of pressure Crusaders on the ball looking to build one, oh, one by Walters Cuts in. Good defending there. As Alison Stanek gets across the ball. She's had a lot to do out here. She's done very well, actually. Yep, Stanek yeah, recovers well. God, eh? What a lovely ball played in behind. Fitzsimmons comes out. It's a good piece of uh, action there from God, eh? Good ball in. She was looking to find Berger on the far right, but Fitzsimmons came across, and it was a... A relatively uh, easy save. Dumont plays the ball forward. Garde out wide to Berger. Berger inside to Garde. Garde back to Berger. Looks like Dumont's going to collect this. Delivers. Berger. Got loads of space. Taken away. Crusaders looking to break. Froelich looks to break. Actually did very well there. A little bit of pressure. Well done. Good defending. Walters on the ball. Good pressure here from Stanek. She's done really well. Really well today. Yep, Stanek so she, far. Uh, responds well when yeah. the, some, something happens and she sticks with it and uh, recovers well as well. So. Wicks on the ball. <coughs> God, they're looking to bring it down. It's cleared. Well, if you've just joined us, welcome to CISN.TV, the number one social streaming platform dedicated exclusively to local Iowa sports, CISN.TV. Zero, zero. Iowa City, Regina, I've had most of the pressure. Throw in, Crusaders, looking to capitalize, ball played into the box. Cleared, but not too far. The lines aren't totally cleared. A little bit of pressure. There's a lot of pressure in here from the Crusaders. Throw in. Stanek on the ball. Looking for Katie Cook. Lays it back. Stanek. Little ball in. Little bending ball away from the defenders. Ashley Asopo, she seems like an aggressive player. She wants to win. She looks like a winner. Ball played forward. Dumont. With a deftly little header. Looks to play forward. Gardet, good defending. Yep. They find it very difficult to break the lines. Burger's feet. Cuts inside. Looking for Gardet. Touch is too big. It's cleared. That's Conlon. Looking to break the line. 
Claire got it, I believe, it got it, got it out there with with her sister in that uh, little play right there in that sequence. And here we have a break from the Crusaders out onto the right hand side. Katie Cook, looking dangerous, keeping the ball well. Yes, beats a defender. Gets on the right foot. Good defending there. Kennedy Scott was beaten, turned and won the ball back as the ball's launched forward into the box. A little melee. Scott goes to ground. Healing wants good. to keep the pressure on here. Yep, yep. Stanick on the ball. Plays the ball out wide. Oh, nice idea. Nice. Deaf little touch to break the line in between the two defenders. Great split pass. Ball's out for throwing. Stanek on the ball. Plays it forward. Peck needs some help. Throwing. Peck on the ball. Two minutes left of the match. Regina just can't seem to break the lines. Pressure's good here. Ball played into feet. Dumont putting pressure. Oh, good piece of play. Ball goes out wide. Ball was played out there by Brooklyn Froelich. Brooklyn Froelich looks like he's got a bit of pace and looks like a strong player. Can withhold a tackle as well. A strong challenge there in the box. Very strong challenge. Referee decides. I'm not going to give a card for that. I think it was a little bit malicious. She wasn't going for the ball. Like, like I said to you earlier on, Joe, <laughs> Ashley Asopi seems like a very, very strong, pl uh, strong player. A winner. Committed. Yep, and we see the, uh, the trainer driving over there to, to the benches just to make sure everybody's all right. It's a quick response, if you will, on that one. Is yeah. another challenge here? Stanek, what great defending again. She's had a bit of work to do today, but she's done well for herself. Supel plays the ball in. Garde playing the ball forward. Claire Conlon cleared away. A Sophie lays the ball back, spins out to get it back in space, putting pressure on it. Regina back for her saying, we're having none of this right now. Oh, Strong challenge. Offside. Soapy is offside. Referee, referee hasn't seen a linesman. This is what I'm talking about. Have a little look. Check your shoulder. That's why, the, that's why they should be mic'd up. Yep, she still yeah. hasn't seen Yep, and the crowd is kind of getting into it now. She still hasn't. Well, here we go. You think the it uh, coaches or the officials over there might get on that also as well? I'll be all over it at half time. <laughs> here at James County Soccer Complex, it's Bishop Healan Crusaders. We're 11 and 7, 0. Iowa City Regina Regals, 0. The last 10 minutes of the game have been end to end. A little bit of pressure. A little bit of pressure from the Crusaders. However, it has been Iowa City Regina. Also, we've just got word from the other game, starting in, starting the second half, which hasn't started. It's 2-1 to Assumption. So it seems like a cracking game on the other side. If you just joined us, please don't leave us. We've got three games today, three exciting games. We've got the 2A final between Waverly Shellrock and Pella. We've got the... Ma we've got the the 3A final with Ankeny and West Des Moines Valley. So we're in for a cracker. Joe, your thoughts on the first half, having, having watched that? Yep, a little bit of back and forth. Uh, first half there. Thanks. Appreciate it. Oh. <laughs> and we lost our camera there. Uh, So right, we've got Peter Top, you'll put it together. Yep, just a little bit of technical diff difficulty here, I guess. Yeah. 
But yeah, getting back to the first half here, it's uh, a little bit of back and forth there. Helen kind of withstood uh, their, the Regina's uh, attack, strong attack early on in the game. A lot of uh, shots, not sure many were on goal, you say, you know, they, they had a lot of shots from a ways out and uh, not really much of a challenge for uh, uh, Fitzsimmons in goal for the Crusaders. And then for the for the Regals, they uh, just kind of, they kind of, it looked like they might have started to get frustrated there near the end of the first half, not getting a lot of shots, a lot of possession time, and uh, no goals to show for it. Yeah, I think uh, Asof, Asof, she, uh, Asof, she uh, trying to get my pronunciations right here, yeah, but... She started to put a bit of pressure on the back four, which was causing some havoc. Um, committed a couple of fouls. You know, as a defender, you know, part of your job is I'm going to rough up the center forward, you know. So that she's roughing up the back four. So it'll be interesting to see how they come out in the second half. And thank you very much. We're going to take a break at this point, and we will be back shortly. Iowa Pig Farmers Care. Learn more at iowapork.org. Here on the pavement and big. Being in Des Moines, you just get it through the experience. I'm a fan of a lot of our like fast, casual cuisine. A little theater, some great restaurants. There's a lot going on musically. If you can't find things to do in Des Moines, you must be boring. This is a magical place. All you have to do, you just have to get there. The Mega Food, Fashion, Fitness, you name it, Center. For 80 years, we've been your neighborhood meat and grocery store. Focused on cutting you the highest quality meats for your backyard barbecue. Providing the freshest ingredients for your summer salad. And making sure your shopping trip is as easy and sweet as grandma's blueberry pie. So while others try to put it all under one roof, at Fairway, we put our all into meat and grocery. They say our idea of fun is morning tea. And afternoon tea. And anytime tea. And we hang out like bumps on a log. They say Storm Lake Iowa isn't in the center of the action. And when we study, we're not exactly grounded. But you know what we say. You gotta see it to believe it. They say if you know this top athletes in the country return to America's heartland. Be there June 21st through the 24th, live at Drake Stadium in Des Moines, as the superstars of today and tomorrow put it all on the line. And Simpson to win it. At the USATF Outdoor Championships. Hastings holds on to win. To catch all of the action live, purchase tickets now at draketicks.com slash USATF. The USATF Outdoor Championships are back in Iowa. Don't miss it. Fast Start Savings. Through Monday at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. Up to 25% off. Select new 18 Silverado 1500 Crew Cab LTZ or High Country Editions. Up to 15% off. Select new 18 Suburbans and Tahos. Through Monday, save thousands on hundreds of new Chevys in Waukee. Up to 23% off. Select new 18 Crews and Malibu LTs. Save thousands in Waukee. Hurry in. Offer ends Monday. Schottenkirk Chevrolet on the west end of Hickman, Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Fast and here, we don't just dream, we make history by nearly doubling our clean energy as part of our 100% renewable vision. With this, our energy costs will remain some of the lowest in the nation. We'll create new jobs and boost economic growth. Our air will be cleaner, our state stronger, and together, we'll advance this country's energy future forever. Mid-American Energy, obsessively, relentlessly at your service. This is Iowa. This is your hometown clothing store, the one that had it all, everything to get the work done all in one place. GNL Clothing is your hometown Iowa store. Stop in and see us, or we're only a click or phone call away. Family owned for nearly a century. GNL Clothing, 1801 Ingersoll, Des Moines. GNL Clothing. Hi, Ron. 
Ron here, head coach of Westside Auto Pros. When your car's on the injured reserve, you want to get it back in the game as soon as possible. I know that. That's why you need to bring it here to Westside Auto Pros. I have a team of experts that can fix almost every automotive injury. Whether it's a fractured joint, a brake, or if your car just got its bell rung, no problem. We can even do a complete physical on your car to make sure it's game ready for the entire season. So bring your car to Westside Auto Pros and we'll get it back in the starting lineup in no time. Hey, you guys are dogging it back here. Let's move it, move it, move it. Here's to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. Pig Farmers Care. Learn more at iowapork.org. Hello everyone and welcome back to James Carney Soccer Complex. I'm Justin Forst and alongside me is Joe Danielson. Joe, I mean it's been a, a cracking first half end to end in this 1A class 1A semi-final between Iowa City Regals and uh, Bishop Healing Crusaders. I've been calling them Crusaders during the match, I guess, because it's been end to end and so quick. You know. Yeah, it's a little bit yeah. easier than uh, Bishop Healing. Yeah. Well, just looking at analyzing that first half, I would say obviously that Regina have had most of the pressure, and they're looking to get Garde in up front, who's been pretty effective. She's got a bit of skill about it. They just can't break the line, and I think that's where they're struggling. Every shot's been from far, and Fitzsimmons has uh, managed to, you know, it's been simple for her. It's just straight into her hand, so it hasn't really been a problem. Looking at, if you're, if you're the coach of Crusaders, what would your message be to the players? I mean, what you're looking to maybe try and do? Uh, you know, I think they're going to want to possess the ball more here in this uh, second half so that they can uh, work together to get something kind of moving forward in their favor instead of uh, always responding to the re the regal the regals on offense are very aggressive so they're always they caught get responding to their pressure and then they get kind of caught up in that two uh attack system that the yeah. regals do where they have, they pressure strong on offense then they sit a bunch back on defense so the crusaders kind of need to respond to that and they uh you need to move into the midfield and uh play your uh, midfield back soon you're holding mids and move them up so you could feed those attackers that yeah, they, those yeah. forwards that they kind of they're leaving out there in no man's land right now two different types of games uh you see uh the crusaders dropping very deep and they look to counter attack and they've been pretty effective with it looking for ashley Sof, who's been pretty aggressive up front um although their leading goal scorer ellie jangler hasn't really done much today they've really contained her i think uh when you look at Regina, Garde has been pretty effective. As we look to start the second half, referees looking across at those at their linesmen or first and second assistants. As we kick off the second half with Regina in all white versus the Crusaders in all navy blue. Regina going from left to right. Ball played in. Conlon. Cut away. Something different out here. A bit of pace here on the right hand side. As didn't quite connect that, did she? Yep. I think she ran lovely out of space a little bit and lovely ball played out onto the right hand side. A bit dangerous, bit of speed there. Didn't quite connect it. Yeah, it's probably really the best chance that uh, Bishop Helan's had today so, uh, on goal. Is that right there? Sophie on the ball plays a lovely ball in to the goal the top goal scorer freshman Ellie Jengler ball played forward that's an easy one for Wicks Wicks senior goalkeeper 
Well played. On the near side. Looking for Garde. Ball not quite cleared. <sighs> Ashlyn Peck plays the ball forward. And sometimes, we, again, we've kind of seen them going for the power shots when really a finesse touch or a, a nice finesse pass would be more appropriate. Yeah, it's uh, the passes, I mean, they, both sides in a way have struggled to really keep possession. Okay, and I, I think it's going to take maybe a technical error from one of the teams here that will break down. I mean, they, they haven't really broken the lines, either team. All the shots have been from out, out distance as the ball's played forward looking for guard A. Every, everything is played forward looking for Fitzsimmons comes out. DeMont was looking to play guard A. It seems to be the combination of the day. Fitzsimmons plays the ball forward. No pressure on Conlon. Fails to control. <laughs> ball played forward by Mahoney. Out wide to a Sophie. Little bit of skill. Little bit of weaving and jiving. Ball played in. Jengler. Good defending, a Sophie. Not having any part of that. Ball, ball was cleared. Straight into her. Yep, she kind of lost that ball in the sun. Yeah, Conlon. Good pressure out there from Mahoney. Looks to play the ball in. Cleared away. Now it's a tale of two halves because Regina can't break the line. Got a good challenge. Again by that center back. Froelich is having an outstanding game today. Froelich and Stanek having a great game. Cut away. Mahoney lays the ball back. Chris Crusaders looking to build. Garde comes in with the tackle, wins the ball. Looking for DeMont out on the far side, nearer side to us on the right. But it's well covered. DeMont looking for a quick throw. Straight into feet. Cook looking to retain possession. Does well. Conlon looking to switch the point of attack. Can't seem to find. Abusada on the far side, but the ball's played forward. Jengler. And yep. it's cleaned up. Yep, and she's kind of had a problem when she uh, gets the ball. Is uh, knowing where to go with it or finding Cook, two Cook defenders be, on her. Cook yeah. seems, seems to be everywhere as the ball's played forward. Good defending. As Abasada came came around on the far side. Asopi, my correction. Crusaders looking to go forward, looking for Gengler, the top goal scorer, the freshman top goal scorer. Crusaders looking for something, playing from right to left. Regina looking to take a quick throw <laughs> when it's Crusaders ball. Ball played back. Peck delivers. No one there. Ball played back. Shot comes in. It's a good shot. And it's in. It's a goal. What a, what a fantastic goal from distance. It came out of nowhere. And it's that one again. Grace Mahoney having a fantastic game. Ball went bending in. Boy, just when you, you know, we saw that. Again, with that long clear, kind of right into the middle, we didn't see anybody there, and she came out of nowhere to got a foot on it and scored. Mahoney stepped onto that one, bending ball, round one defender, round wicking goal, into the bottom corner as it dipped in with a bit of a swerve. What's the response now? Yep, you can of feel Regina. the uh, momentum look to break down the right-hand side. A little bit of a momentum shift there, too, when you hear all the uh, Crusader fans as well as the team is playing a little bit more energy. Ball thrown in. What's the response going to be like? We're early. We've only had 11 minutes of the second half. Anything can happen. Ball laid back by Sophie. Into the goal scorer Mahoney. She's having a cracking game right now. Gengler on the ball. Spreads it wide. Near side. Left hand side. What a shift. Peck looks to deliver. Goes over ahead. Sophie on the ball. 
The Regina crowd to my left have gone quiet. The Crusaders fans are on their feet. Yep, they got us all next to us too, and they've got umbrellas, and it's that just shows how hot it is up here as well in the metal bleachers. Just eludes Mahoney there, cleared away. <coughs> Crusaders still keeping possession, really doing well at this point. How this momentum has changed in the second half, Joe, as they look to break again down the left-hand side. No numbers in the box. Everybody's outside the box. He plays forward. A cracking tackle there. Demont getting entangled there with Abby Steen. Abby Steen's having a cracking game so far. Really doing well. Ball goes out for a throw. Ashley Peck delivers into Gengler. We're hearing more of Gengler. Got a looking for something again. Play broken up there again by Abby Steen. Gangler looks to play the goal scorer. Mahoney in. Mahoney booming with confidence. Puts a bit of pressure on it. Ball played in behind her. Far left hand side. Dumont. The teammates scream. Man on. 2v2. Well taken there. I've been really impressed with uh, Froelich today. She's got a bit of pace. She's broken through the lines. As, as Grant... Godet delivers for Simmons. Diving save to her right. Smothers and covers the ball. Slows the game down. Joe, that goal came from nowhere. Yep, that the, did just like shift the momentum out of nowhere, right? We saw that kick right into the middle of the uh, the field. We didn't see any uh, Crusaders there, and boom, they came in and scored. And haven't gotten it up on the uh, big scoreboard here yet, but the players know it. Mahoney looking to do something. Ball was played inside. Long shot. It should be a matter of formality for Wick. Looks to play wide. Building from the back. Pressure coming in at 100 miles an hour. Dumont plays the ball forward. That should be Fitzsimmons. A nice easy one. Ball punted forward. Good piece of control. Peck looking to get round. Picked up by Gengler. There's just a sense of confidence here within this Crusaders team. Come from nothing in the first half. Not the same team. Maybe the coach delivered the message at half time. Yep, and they get that one goal now. They can kind of sit back a little bit more on defense and play with that confidence. Absolutely. The ball picked up, cleared. And by Froelich there again. There we go on the uh, big scoreboard there. Every time we look at the back line, Froelich's on the ball. In cahoots with Abby Steen. Gangler taken away by Conlon. Conlon plays the ball forward. It's too high. DeMontin with a crunching tackle. Fair enough. Abasada lays the ball back. Regina looking for something as the ball was played into Katie Cook. Well, if you've just joined us, my name is Justin Forster, and alongside me is. Sorry, I just got caught off guard there with uh, some of the fans there, Joe. <laughs> Sorry. That's all right. Alongside me is Joe Danielson. <laughs> That is a fact. I heard of, uh, something in the crowd and I looked to my left. It happens sometimes as Garde <laughs> looks to do something with this. Give me the ball. Demont stripped to the ball. She's working fearlessly as the ball's broken. Ash Ashlyn Peck also having a great game so far. Mahoney, good bit of pressure. Zanil plays the ball out wide. Pressure on Zanil. Sophie looking for Crusaders looking for a long shot that's Peck going to be difficult all cleared Wicks a big one looking forward God, a bit of pressure looking to break the line as the cover comes across ball's cleared away and it's gone out for a throw in Sydney Pratt quick throw we have a substitution 
Yep, four coming on here for the Regals. It's the front line. The three plus one. Oh, and right when they were on that attack there, they kind of... So just joined us. It's 1-0 to the Crusaders. Mahoney with a cracking strike into the bottom corner. This live streaming, uh, <coughs> streaming is brought to you by CISN TV. Ball cleared away. Gangler into the midfield, looking for Peck. Taken away by Dumont. Conlon. Cleared away. This Crusaders back line is hard to break down. Stanek has had a good game. Two, three players around the ball. Dumont. Conlon. Looking from distance. Fitzsimmons. Very easy. A patient Sorry, attack there. Kind of just led to the easy when it kind of bailed him out for Fitzsimmons. Not as much work. Fitzsimmons clears the ball forward, looking for Mahoney. Ball taken down. Cleared away. Peck delivers. Looking for Sophie. She's been a handful out there. I think that's a bit of a tactical change to have her put out there on the right-hand side to run at the left back. Although Regina looking to break. On the, on the near side to us, we have... Stephanie Stengler was Stenger was breaking free. She wasn't seen. Yep, and it's kind of back to the first half kind of a little bit now. Again, after that quick goal out of nowhere. <laughs> Regina on the attack. Conlon looks to deliver. And it goes out for a goal kick. Crusaders now. Numbers are on the ball. This could be a, a mammoth effort with 27 minutes to go to try and see the game out at 1-0. Up in there, uh, relying on Fitzsimmons back there too, directing the defense and uh, playing really well in the keeper position so far. Goal kick. Regina picked the ball up. Looking for something, anything right now. Players, it's just really difficult right now. Gasparoni was looking to try and break the line there four five crusaders defenders around there as regina looked to build ball played in gasparoni with space between the lines used to be a bit quicker ball played in good defending it goes out for a corner it's getting real dangerous abby, here now. abby abby steen again they're looking for a short corner here two players well, they've woken up on this one because two defenders have gone out. Look to deliver. Long ball in. The challenge is going. <coughs> Crusaders clear. Froelich looking forward. Well done. Good recovery run there by Zaniel. Ball played into the midfield. Conlon has two players on her. One of them, Mahoney. Ball cleared away. To the far side. Number 22, Kennedy Scott, play, launches the ball forward. From left to right. Regina putting some pressure, pressing and pressing high. Ball cleared away. Again, the Crusaders have dropped in very deep with a five back line. But if they can get, if Dumont can get on this ball and look to the far side, there's a player open. In between the lines, could be very dangerous. Dumont on the, with the throw. Garde. Another substitution. Another in line here. of three players coming in. Well, Joe, so far it's, uh, it started off with the Crusaders putting on the pressure, but it's changed now. You know, Regina looking now to put on the pressure maybe make, they might make some changes they might go through at the back at some stage 24 minutes to go throw in Mahoney clears, clears it away only to Conlon yep that, that first five minutes was really all the Crusaders needed and they capitalized during that time they had on offense yep
Ball play forward. Nobody up there. No, there's no target play. Everyone's dropped in deep for the Crusaders. It's Stanek again, down the far right. She's had a cracking game. Hasn't really done anything wrong. Defensively, she's been there. She's pressed. She's won the ball. As it's into guard A's feet. They're looking to switch the point of attack. Supol. Supol was dispossessed. Ball played forward. As Regina looked to break down the right hand side. Nice little combination in there. Got it. Turned it back. Looks like they're going man on man with uh, Gade, doesn't it, Joe? Yep, there's a nice matchup there too, right in the midfield. Looks like Sydney Pratt has been uh, allocated or designated to mark her. As Crusaders look to build something. Conlon breaks up play. Looking for Garde to Garde's feet. Down the right hand side. We have. It could have been switched on. Stenger was down the right hand side. Stenger's making a break into the box as the ball's looking to be delivered. Into Stenger. She comes in. Nice piece of skill there. Haven't seen that in a long time, Joe. <laughs> yeah, up right in front of the goal box there. A little bit of dangerous play. Just, but I thought she was just going to hop up the field with it. Regina still looking for something. Ball laid back. It was a lightly weighted pass. <laughs> Referee calls a foul. So we have a free kick on the, just inside the half, inside the Crusaders half. The ball's played forward. Into guard A. No, well played. Good defending there again by Froelich. Yep, right when it comes back to defending, out. she's everywhere. She's putting pressure. Oh, there's a little bit of off the ball incident there. From number 21, Ellie Barber. Game goes on. Ref's not doing anything. Conlon looking to materialize something here for Regina. The pace of the game is starting to pick up. Yep, 20 minutes left in this second half. The, the ball's players, played it. Looking uh, for Garde at the top of the box. Lays it off. Yep. Conlon, big touch. Cleared away. One of... We were saying the players can feel that clock too as we hear oh, and yeah. watch it. 21 minutes to go. <laughs> Ellie Barber has been put through her paces up front. Really working hard. She's closing down all over. As we have another substitution. Conlon going off. <laughs> DeMont coming back into the game. See if she can change something here. Katie Cook's back in the game for the Crusaders. Ball played forward. Katie Cook. Big touch. Peck. Cook. Cut away. In pass intercepted by Zaniel. Long ball forward to no man's land. It's picked up easily at the back. Natalie Shank just managed to get away. Peck looks to deliver. Lows down. By Supor. Well, now we're at the water break. If you've just joined us, you're missing a cracking game. My name is Justin Forster. Alongside me is Joe Danielson. For the Class 1A state champ High School State Championships. It's been a cracking second half, Joe. Yep, a lot of action so far. Kind of similar to the first half, but uh, Bishop Heelan, uh, they got their chance and they took it, and that's why they lead 1-0 here. Mahoney with the goal. Came out of nowhere. Got it on her right foot. Bent it round. Wick into the bottom corner. Well, it's been end-to-end. -end. I need a bit of a water break here as well, to be honest with you. Yep, and that was a, uh, you know, she she... 
We'll, and we're going to take a break and we'll be back shortly. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes a vision for the future. The ability to turn a challenge into a success. And individuals who inspire new generations of growth. Greater Des Moines has done a lot of growing over the years, and so have we. At Brick Gentry Law, your success is something that we create together. Thank you for making us a part of your community. Thank you for 50 years. Building at Schottenkirk Chevy Waukee. Up to 25% off. Select new 18 Silverado 1500 Crew Cab LTZ or High Country Editions. Up to 15% off. Select new 18 Suburbans and Tahoes. Through Monday, save thousands on hundreds of new Chevys in Waukee. Up to 23% off. Select new 18 Crews and Malibu LTs. Save thousands in Waukee. Hurry in. Offer ends Monday. Schottenkirk Chevrolet on the west end of Hickman, Waukee. WaukeeChevy.com. Fast starts. Here's to everyone who believes in competition and good sportsmanship, who knows it's not about the trophies or the medals, but rather the lessons learned. For those who understand, it's not whether you win or lose, just that you give your best. So go ahead, place them up, take the field, have fun, and play. For the experience, for the memories, for the love of the game, Shields. Pig Farmers Care. Learn more at iowapork.org. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Class 1A State Championship Semi-Finals. Game between Iowa City Regina and Bishop Heelan Crusaders. Right now it's 1-0 to the Crusaders <coughs> and the second half has actually been more thrilling than the first half to be honest with you Joe. Um, moving forward here with 20 minutes to go. Your thoughts. What do you think Regina might do? Uh, Regina, they're probably going to come out here, uh, you know, pretty animated, pretty ready to go. They know they got 20 minutes left in their season. Um, and with that, you know, they're, they're really going to be looking to push in the midfield. We've seen uh, Garde and Dumont, and uh, and uh, they're really going to need to get something going through the middle with those two players in order to get, get in this game, maybe tie it up or even take the lead with two goals. Yes, absolutely. And this game today is brought to you by CISN.TV, the number one social streaming platform dedicated exclusively to local Iowa sports. CISN.TV. As the players walk back on the field, just from the body language, Crusaders came on here like ready to go. First team onto the field. We have a throw in here. The fans get on their feet to my left. The Iowa City Regina fans throw in near side to us here in the grandstand and amongst all the fans. The Crusaders. Duhan throws it in. She was looking for Katie Cook. Went over her head. As Iowa City Regina look to build. Garde, feet. 2v1 situation. Abusada to the left. Ball's not played into her. Decides to cut in. Shot. Keeper dives. Dived a little bit early, but Fitzsimmons dealt to that. Yep, she lost her footing there a little bit initially, but uh, was able to recover and touch that ball. Now taking her time, directing her players on the defense. It was Claire Garde that... Uh, Cut in. As Zanil lets the ball go out of bounds. Berger. Kick forward. Big touch. Gengler back in the game. Looks to play the ball forward. Cleared away. Taken by Garde. Looking to break the line. She breaks into the box. And cleared away again. Berger looks to shoot. Blocked. Good defending there. 
by Sophie. Ball played forward. Dumont. Little Dinkin. Couldn't find anyone. Ball was cleared. Dumont again. Square ball. Cut out. As Crusaders look to break. And it looks like that might be a foul. No? Yes? Yeah. Referee did blow. Yep. And she has been kind of uh, quiet with the whistle so it's far definitely today. definitely a foul on Ellie Gangler. A couple yeah. fouls called for me. So there have been a couple questionable calls, but nothing too crazy. Ball played forward. Looking to break the line. That should be an easy one for Wick. Ball goes straight into Wick. Again, I think that Froelich's had a great game. The who delivered the ball. She's been fantastic as she heads the ball. Just over the halfway line. Yep, she's definitely been a centerpiece to their defense back there. Kind of anchoring them also. Yep. The ball was played in. Forward. As Regina looked to build down the left. Nice little combination. In for Osaba on the far side. Ball coming to the near side. Commentary side, as we would say. A little bit of a challenge. Referee has given it. Sense a little bit of frustration in the crowd. Yep, as the clock winds down it's more here, three more minutes have passed. 17 minutes left of the game. It's been an exciting 1A semi-final. Ball into the box, into the mix as we'll say. Oh, didn't quite catch it. Wick with the clearance. Again. A nice header. Froelich with a header. Nice and strong. Dumont on the ball. Plays the ball out wide to Berger. Good defending. Berger with a throw. To Garde, trying to find Berger. Intercepted. A little bit of pressure. Nice little battle out to the near side. Ball cleared by Crusaders. Not far enough. Just to the other side of the halfway line. Dumont on the ball. Looking to spread it. Colin wanted it. Decides to go back. It's a nice little combination out there. Abasada, Garde on the ball. Abasada gets forward, but Garde decides to swing the ball, switch it out here to the near side. 15 minutes left of this encounter, to be precise, and 40 seconds. Abasada challenged. Frolix had a great game out there, to be honest with you. Regina looking to build out the back. Pressure from Gengler. Didn't quite win it. If she had it, she was clear on goal. Ball played. Looking for Garde. Garde has been man marked. Been good numbers here for the Regals. Attacking, they've got, they've got good numbers out to the right hand side. It's 2v1. Cleared away. Couldn't quite find Dumont. But they pick it up again. Into Berger. Berger on the right, Dumont, into Garde, Fitzsimmons comes out, this is an easy one, easy one for Fitzsimmons. <laughs> well taken, near side, just inside the half, Dumont, pushed to the ground, a foul on Duhan. Duhin. Zanil. Just to play the ball forward. Not many players in the box. Again. Cleared away. Zanil. Berger. Good defending. Nobody up front. There's no target player to hold the ball up. So it's pretty easy. Three at the back. Oh, cut away. This could be it. Counter attack on to the far right hand side. Recovery runs are coming in. 
picked up. Abasala looking to build out far left hand side. Plays the ball forward. Got his feet. <coughs> the Crusaders yeah. responding well here again. Uh, they, yeah, they're defending very yep, well at this point, defense. aren't they? Yeah. I totally agree as they look to make another change. Yep, and it's coach is kind of telling them, you know, just hold hold on here. They have some time. They can they can be still be aggressive on offense, but they want to play yep. strong defense. With 13 minutes to go. Still 1-0. If you've just joined us, you're missing an exciting match. 13 minutes to go. It's 1-0 to the Crusaders. Mahoney with the goal. Ball played forward. One target player, support coming in. Ball's out wide. Berger on the ball. It's cut out. Berger in with a tackle. Dumont into Carlon. Conlon. Godet looks to break the line. Fitzsimmons comes out and says, thank you, I'll take that one. Yep, and she's been there all, all game long today. Fitzsimmons punts the ball forward. Flicked on. And that'll be a throw to the Crusaders. Deep, deep down in Iowa City Regina's half. There might be a sense of game management here. Slow the game down. They're not. They're looking to attack. They need more goals. Crusaders throw. We've just heard news that Assumption are now winning 5-1 in the other semi-final. 20 minutes left. I've heard of miracles, but I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think they'll, they'll come back as Regina looked to break. 1-0 down. Abasada on the far side. That's the first time, I think. That Froelich has given away a foul. Dumont steps up. Going to put a right foot on this. They need more numbers in the box. There's nobody up front for the Crusaders. I'll put more numbers in the box there. They need a goal. Ball played in. Right footed. Got a going. Oh. And yep, there Close was ball. a wide gap right there in the middle there. Just like he said, they kind of need some more players in the box. Somebody's there to receive that ball. They had an easy yeah. shot on goal. They have four at the back here. They could have put another two in there. Come on, picks the ball up. Nice piece of control. Again, looking for Garde, but Garde is well taken care of by Froelich. Froelich's done a good job at the back. I've been pretty impressed with Froelich, to be honest with you. And a centre back partner, Abby Steen. Yep. Come on. Nice piece of skill. Nice, nice piece of skill by Bleeker. He's got the ball from a right to left foot. Played the ball forward, but it went out of bounds. As more subs are coming in. Nine minutes and 45 seconds left of the match. I want to see if there's going to be a change here from Regina. Are they going to change anything in this game? Are they going to try and push numbers forward they need the goal they're going to tie this game we'll play forward DeMont with the throw a little bit of a difficult ball from Gasparoni into DeMont DeMont wanted it at feet received it on her head <laughs> throw in Overly weighted pass into DeMont there by Zanil. Sense of tiredness, wouldn't you say? Yep, you can Go. see that. You kind of hear a little bit of sloppy play so far. Players are, the game's winding down and the players are trying to make something happen, trying every every attempt they can. 
Yeah, as uh, Crusaders look to keep the ball. They're not really managing the game. They're trying to break forward. This is the time where they want to manage the game. Slow the game down. Good piece of defending there. By Iowa City. Sullivan, the sophomore defender. On the ball right now. Just to play it forward. Into DeMont. Out wide to Walter. Walter looks forward. Gasparoni after it. And again. It's Froelich. Gets her body in front. She gets up gingerly. She's limping. Maybe a slight knock as some more changes are coming in. Yep, and these, just, these uh, long jogs too across the field also uh, when... when time starts running down it it, uh, it gets important I'll be honest with you if I'm the team that's done I'll try and get some pace on the outside in the 7-eleven I wouldn't make any more changes because then I'm slowing the game down yep as they look to make another change Dumont on the ball throws it in yes difficult one for Gasparoni to deal with as it's cleared away That's a foul. <laughs> I believe. Yeah. I believe you can't. I mean, that's actually in terms. If you put lay hands on someone, that's a card. But maybe different rules in high school. Yep, and the crowd knows it too. They uh, even said that's kind of getting wild over here. But a little bit of a frustration, I guess. Here, the ball played forward by Peck. Pressure, two Crusaders players, and they've won the they've won the throne. Good job out there. Mahoney dispossessed, but it's one back. As Regina looked to try and build another attack into Gasparoni, a tired pass, looking for Dumont, a long range effort by Peck it was a tired effort legs are tired out there six yep. minutes to go yep and here's a chance here with the long punt they could get one behind the defense Gasparoni into Garde Garde with a big touch balls bouncing everywhere Sullivan sophomore defender on the ball A little bit of pressure there from Mahoney, the goal scorer today for the Crusaders. The Crusaders are battling, trying to defend this lead. Gasparoni looking to get in. But it's picked up by Froelich. Takes the ball wide. Keeps the ball in bounds. Little one two. Nice. They're playing with confidence. Yep, nice play there from Bishop Heelan, as you can see, to move that ball out of there strong. So the Crusaders can't really keep the ball at this point. They're just defending. Defending for their lives. Their coach is jumping up and down. Directing his team. Abasada. Substitution. Seems like it's player for player. Thrown far side. Into feet. Didn't quite get there. Crusaders throw. They walk to the ball. Slow the game down. Stanek with the throw. Dispossessed. Garde far side. Looking to cut in onto her right foot again. Delivered. Gasparoni fighting for it there. Goes down. No foul. Ball cleared. Yep, and I think that was the right call. I don't think there's a foul there, too. Just incidental contact. Correct. I, I totally agree with that. Sullivan looking to build something. Mahoney shields the ball. Sullivan. A little battle out there. Yep. And again there, that was still just aggressive play. Nothing foul there about that. Another nice no call. 
They do want to watch and see if it gets a little chippy over here. Abby Steve working gutlessly out there. One of the center backs. Abby Steen and Froelich. The back line, in fact. The whole back line for uh, Crusaders have been working hard today. Gasparoni looking to build something. Cleared away. Cleared away. Looking for their lone striker up front. Abby Peck looking to do something here. Sullivan cuts it out. Long ball forward. Zanil. Plays the ball out wide. Playing in the longest three minutes for the Crusaders here yep. that they're going to play all year. Zanil looking to break the line. Good tackle there by Mahoney. As the Crusaders look, not really closing the gaps. They're just keeping five at the back there. Just dealing with it. Looking for the counter attack. It's a nice play. Nice start again back Topi. into the middle. DeMont tirelessly clears her line. Zanil out wide. Garde with a little layoff onto Conlon. Looking for Garde again. Lines are cleared again. Zanil on the ball. Two minutes, 19 seconds left of the game. Stanek launches the ball forward. Gives her team a breather. 1 0 up still. Wicks with a long ball forward. Flicked on by DeMont. Looking to break the lines. Gasparoni coming in on the far post. Covers there. Asopi's had a good game as well. Some great cover. Yep, and you see Gasparoni just kind of running out, running out of uh, gas right there as she covers the whole field. DeMont tries to get the ball. Cleared away again by Abby Steen. DeMont. Gasparoni looking to deliver. Cross comes in. Bending ball. Doesn't quite make it. Cleared away. A minute and 30 seconds to go of the game. Sullivan on the ball. Looking to switch it. They need to get this ball forward. They need to get numbers forward if they're going to get back in this game. Could be an exciting finish here, Joe. Ball played in. Guard A. Right foot. Into Zanil. Cleared away again by the Crusaders. Too much dribbling there on that one. In front of the net. Sullivan playing the ball forward. Dumont, nothing happening. Peck looks to clear. Closed down by Sullivan. Sullivan on the ball, looking for a quick throw. 45 seconds left. Gasparoni takes a touch inside. Goes past one. Doesn't get past the second one. Zanil plays the ball out wide. Players, Crusaders defenders are working gutlessly out there. Garde looks to slide the ball in. And it's Fitzsimmons again. Gets the ball. Smothered. Looking to clear a line. Slowing the game down. On the far side, the Crusaders players are all ready to run on the field. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. Game's not over. Sullivan. Got to turn and Dumont. Get the ball towards the net. Clear it away. Peck fighting and that's it game over the Crusaders have now come from nothing in the first half Joe I mean they were under a lot of pressure they've come from nothing Mahoney second half with a fantastic finish an unbelievable finish a bit of an well, unlikely finish yeah too there for the Crusaders you didn't really we didn't think to expect them to be here after watching that first half we kind of thought Boy, it's only a matter of time before Regina scores a goal here, but uh, he went flip the switch, and the Crusaders take this one 1-0. One yeah, that was a fantastic, well, a more thrilling second half, to be honest with you. Regina put everything into it. Just couldn't break down the two lines for the Crusaders. And I, I thought that the Crusaders were like, fought like stalwarts at the back there. I mean, they just were unbelievable. They couldn't be broken down. Garde tried everything. Well, both guard A's. So all in all, well deserved. The Crusaders are moving on to the Class 1A State Championships tomorrow on Field 9 at County Soccer Complex as the players are walking through, shaking hands. 
after they've beaten each other up on the field. Now they're friends again. It's sportsmanship. And that's how it should be. Well, please don't leave us. We've got another cracking game coming up. Match number two, the Class 2A semi-final between Lewis Central. My apologies. Waverly Shell Rock and Pella. Well, we're going to take a break and we'll be back with you shortly. Summer, the top athletes in the country return to America's heartland. Be there June 21st through the 24th, live at Drake Stadium in Des Moines, as the superstars of today and tomorrow put it all on the line and Simpson to win it at the USATF Outdoor Championships. Hastings holds on to win. To catch all of the action live, purchase tickets now at draketicks.com slash USATF. The USATF Outdoor Championships are back in Iowa. Don't miss it. This summer, the top athletes in the country return to America's heartland. Be there June 21st through the 24th, live at Drake Stadium in Des Moines, as the superstars of today and tomorrow put it all on the line and Simpson to win it at the USATF Outdoor Championships. Hastings holds on to win. To catch all of the action live, purchase tickets now at draketicks.com slash USATF. The USATF Outdoor Championships are back in Iowa. Don't miss it. Is in the middle of a bunch of fields. Hey guys, wait up! Game on. They say our idea of fun is morning tea, an afternoon tea, and anytime tea. And we hang out like bumps on a log. They say Storm Lake Iowa isn't in the center of the action. And when we study, we're not exactly grounded. But you know what we say. You gotta see it to believe it. They say Buena Vista University. Their way, where we're not a mega food, fashion, fitness, you name it center. For 80 years, we've been your neighborhood meat and grocery store, focused on cutting you the highest quality meats for your backyard barbecue, providing the freshest ingredients for your summer salad, and making sure your shopping trip is as easy and sweet as grandma's blueberry pie. So while others try to put it all under one roof, at Fairway, we put our all into meat and grocery. Welcome on the pavement and big. Being in Des Moines, you just get it through the experience. I'm a fan of a lot of our like fast, casual cuisine. A little theater, some great restaurants. There's a lot going on musically. If you can't find things to do in Des Moines, you must be boring. This is a magical place. All you have to do, you just have to get there.